Alright guys, so we've got the three example games all lined up here for you. We're playing with um, the level up deck for uh, my Border Pose series. So if you haven't gone, check out the um, the deck tech for this. Go check that out. Gotta watch these videos in order. You may be uh, a bit confused as to what's going on. So this was the first game that I sat down to. Uh, hand was pretty good. We had four lands available. One is a cloud post, um, which is always good, and we have both colors. Uh, we do have two of the caravan escorts, which is great, and then we have a venerated teacher, which is even better. Um, kind of a, a bit of a predicament, and I'm not sure I, I finally decided the best way to approach this, because it, it happened in several games, um, is this start where you have the escort, you have the one drop, but at the same time you don't necessarily want to play it on turn one because you want to get those cloud posts going as soon as possible. Um, so, you know, if you you drop the escort on turn one, then you would have to wait till turn three to untap the cloud post. Um, I, I guess in this case that would work out because you could do turn one escort, turn two escort with the cloud post. Um, it really, I, I guess, just use your best judgment based upon what your opponent is making his first play to be. Um, so opponent does island into expedition map, so we're assuming that he is running a, a post deck as well, and indeed he does use that expedition map to fetch out uh, his cloud post, which um, makes my play all the better, uh, since I, I can now tap um, the one, play the escort, and then tap the cloud post um, later on to a, a single time to level up the escort, sorry, stumbling over words here. Um, it does make me a little sad that I could not, you know, get both escorts into play at this point in time, um, because, you know, this was the play. This is definitely an instant instance where I should have started with the turn one escort, um, because then on turn two I would have done cloud post, second escort, attack for one, um, and then on my opponent's turn here he would have put his cloud post down and I would be able to level one up. Um, it just, it would have moved a little smoother, I guess is the best way to put that. So, game's been a little laggy today, but it'll catch up with us in a second. Um, my opponent is going to play his cloud post and then put down a prophetic prism. Um, so I will use my cloud post to level up my escort and I get an opportunity to play my second escort. Um, and then because I had no other plays there, I was able to use the Evolving Wilds to fetch out um, an island. And we already had a second plane, so definitely figured going for the second island is the best move there. Now my opponent gets a little bit of a life gain, getting his glimmer post out and playing a second expedition map. Um, all this time it's it's making my cloud post this much better but um, at the same time you know he's getting better so it's it's definitely an interesting situation um, you know it's it's one of those things where come the the um, sideboarding you, you really want options against it but as we you know if you watch the video we don't really have a lot of options for it um, luckily I was only playing these single games so it didn't really matter um, kind of an interesting play here when he puts out Golden Urn. This is a confusing move because up until this point everything he had was saying that he was playing Is it Post. Um, Golden Urn is not a card that is seen play in any deck. Um, not even Blue Post. Um, on a Blue Control Post. Uh, so he's clearly playing some interesting version of this deck. Uh, especially now he plays a Gate Warden again. Not a card that you ever see in a Post deck. So it's cool. I mean, this this goes back to the whole theory behind this this series in the first place was that, um, you know, junk post could could basically create anything it wanted. So we tap cloud post. We get three mana, which allows me to level up one of my escorts. Um, so now they are both level one, and then I have the leftover mana to play Journey to Nowhere. Um, and I can re remove the Gate Warden. And again, not a situation where I really had a second play there. So I'm going to be able to use my Evolving Wilds um, and fetch out a, a land. Again, you, your decks tend to be, um, the deck tends to be a bit heavier on the blue side, so given the option, searching on an island is, is your play. Um, the urn is starting to build up, and he now plays a Seagate Oracle, um, and another Gate Warden. The, the Oracles are a great thing, and, and I'm feeling at this point in time that he was mono blue. I haven't really seen anything else, and I'm, I'm assuming the prisms were just there to add extra mana. Um, at this point in time, you just, he has played nothing else, so you just have to go on the assumption that it is blue. Um, Draw into an adept here. I really wanted to get this level up before I played the uh, the teacher because um, the teacher um, will put them on there. I mean, usually, uh, you know, if you look at proliferate, the proliferate has to have a counter to add a counter. But you know, it's it's gonna this teacher is gonna be able to give us two uh, counters on each of these creatures with level up, which is fantastic. It will push him now into that third and final level of his level up, making him a 4-2 flyer, um, and that's what I was really shooting for there. 
So these guys are still stuck until they earn five level counters before they go up to being their their ultimate five five first strike. Uh, you see, I did leave them back because um, sending those into the the gate warden would just kill them off. And I really I have more than enough mana available. I'm not in a bad position. I really didn't want to attack. I wanted to to wait a turn. And as my opponent keeps you know playing these cloud posts and giving me more mana, um, leveling these guys up to that that ultimate five level is is going to be easy to come by. So now another interesting play, Drowner Initiate, um, is going to allow my opponent to slowly mull, um, sorry, mill me down, uh, oddly enough. Kind of an interesting thing if he was doing mono blue control, but, um, you know, it, it definitely hurt me a little bit too because of the fact that I am playing blue. Um, then he plays a Trinket Mage and is going to get out another Golden Urn. Oh, I'm sorry, he gets the Expedition map first, uh, pardon my, my remembrance. Um, puts down a wizard replica, another, it's it's really just kind of blue post junk, basically. Um, wizard replica is, is okay um, at this point in time, especially since I'm playing cloud post as well. Having that two mana available is not going to be hard at all. So I put a planes down and I am going to level up these caravans, though I did have an opportunity to use Mysteries of the Deep. Um, probably should have because my hand is so low. I was just so eager to getting these escorts up to that that final level there, um, since I did have the mana available to do so. So now that they're all leveled up, I am going to swing through with those guys and my flyer. Um, you see here, he chooses to block with the gate warden and then sacrifice one of his um, his uh, trinket mage to stop one of the the escorts from attacking for five. He's definitely at the disadvantage here because of these. Uh, these guys being so big and badass, but down comes another gate warden, and these things are just just trouble. I mean, they're not really hard to deal with; they're just uh, aggravating. I, I guess that's the the only real way to describe it. So get down now, Knight of Cliffhaven, and we're going to be able to level it up twice. Uh, still not quite enough. This one is going to take four before it hits its maximum. Uh, swing through with the escorts, and he does actually decide not to block with the gate warden, which was a little surprising. I'm guessing mostly because of the fact that this Knight of Cliffhaven now has flying, and he wanted some option for stopping the, the flyer. Um, and a bit of another control option here, he uses slow motion, which is going to keep my creature tapped unless I pay two at the beginning of my turn, um, when that trigger comes on the stack. But again, running cloud posts, and um, it, you see, if he was not running cloud posts, I would, I would definitely be losing this game, because I only had one available to me, and that's, that's horrible. Um, but the fact that my opponent has managed to get four out is putting me in a position to, you know, dominate this game. Um, having that two mana is available to pay for uh, slow motion is easy to come by, so I will happily do so. This time I do make sure to play Mysteries of the Deep, and he is going to continue to, to mill cards off my deck. So now we get uh, three more creatures. We have two of our Wave Watches and another Adept here. So we're going to just use our mana at this point in time, however, to level up the Knight and leave that one available to get this Adept into play. Um, we're going to be attacking through. Um, and it's, you know, again, he's going to be able to, to block some of it. He does manage to um, wither down my, my Knight of Cliffhaven to a 0-1. Uh, but it's it's not really going to save him. He's got, you know, here's the second golden urn, urn that I, I was talking about, but he's got this one. He's going to be able to go up five life. He can chump block two of these guys. Um, however, I'm going to be able to level up this knight, and uh, it's, you know, it's just going to, you know, stall for time, I, I guess, is, is what he's doing at the at this point. You know, I'm going to be able to even swing with the, the teacher, who I, I usually tend to leave those back as a blocker. Um, you know, you've got these other bigger, badder creatures that can swing through, and there's no point in just giving up a creature. At this point in time, it, it was mostly he would be able to block with the replica and get no damage through. Um, but I can attack through with everything at this point in time. He chump blocks my two biggest guys and is going to be able to go up five life here, um, putting him at seven. And he's still going to take a significant amount of damage thanks to all this level up, but I did leave myself enough mana available to play these last two guys. Um, He's going to be able to go up one extra life, I believe, off the urn here. Um, a glimmer post would have put him a little more ahead, but at this point in time, like, this game is over because I'm so far ahead as far as creatures go, and there's there's not really a, a cloud, a, I'm sorry, a fog effect that you can get in a mono blue cloud post deck. So he's just, he's out of luck at this point in time, and I'm going to be able to swing through for the win here. Um, there we go. Alright, so we're going to jump down to the second game here. Uh, this was another 
decent game. Um, opening hand was good. We had three um, post options as well as evolving wilds. A little bit of a, a downfall here is if this was an island, we would be in much better shape because we had this add up to we could have played on turn one. Um, this is going to end up being a, a really kind of slow start because of the fact that I have so many of these tapped lands um, and no blue available to me. But I do at this point in time choose to, to search out the island. I could have put down the cloud post here. I, in order to, you know, keep building up my mana, but I felt it was more important that I could get this adept into play on the next turn, um, just to have that creature option available to me. Um, Cloud Post is going to come down now, you know, like I said, you want to get these tapped lands into play as soon as possible, so you have all the opportunity in the world to have those lands untapped and the mana available. Um, at this point in time, let's see, he used a Spawning Breath, and usually when you see this in red and green, um, he's going to be running definitely Eldrazi, um, there's only two of the, the actual ones with the Annihilator that you have to worry about, but I'm going to definitely save the Oblivion Ring for those. Um, you can also play this with uh, a lot of the, just the, the creatures that generate these spawn tokens. Um, and they are, they are tough to deal with because they come at a, a decent size and you can get them in relatively fast, especially when you're using, you know, clearly all these other spells that they give you these um, Eldrazi spawn. So get into another Oblivion Ring, which is fantastic. Um, still holding on to the Teacher here. There's no need to get a blocker into play. Um, definitely want to hold that as long as possible in, in hopes of getting it um, into play with a creature that has level up. So down comes the Hatcher, and this is what I was talking about. They come at a bit of a cost, but it is a 3-3 body, and that is really nice to have. Um, and, you know, it's it's going to be trouble for, for a lot of decks in the early game. Um, and you can get them out relatively fast. I mean, had he been able to sacrifice these tokens, he would have taken two off the mana cost and gotten it in play for um, only two in a red, which is pretty fantastic. But So, game's freezing up on me again, but it's going to be easy to deal with those. Uh, like I said, I was holding these Oblivion Rings. Let's hit play and see if it moves through. There we go. Um, it, you, saving the Oblivion Rings in order to deal with stuff like this. Also, kind of an interesting thing here, get the Escort. So now you have to, to wonder, you know, I could sit back and take 3 damage easily, put this Escort into play, and use the Cloud Posts to level it up twice, um, which I, I think may have been the better move here, though I do use the, the Oblivion Ring. Um, like I said, you could have put this in, it would have been at level 2. Um, you could have even dropped the, the Glimmer Post first, and um, each of those would have tapped for 3, you would have gotten it to level 3, and this would have put you at 4, and then next turn, when it was without summoning sickness, you would have had the 5-5 five, five creature. Um, so I think that was a bit of a misplay on me, getting overly defensive, uh, especially when I had two Glimmer Posts in hand. I mean, that's not... using it on this 3-3 this, um, three, three is not really the ideal play. Uh, kind of another interesting thing he's got going on here is the Faithless Looting. I, I haven't really seen that before with this deck. I mean, I, I have seen definitely um, other versions of this deck um, using the spawn tokens and getting those two Eldrazi out as soon as you can, but Faithless Looting, kind of an interesting thing. I guess it's a, a nice idea because you do have so much mana, you are able to just dump your hand really fast, um, getting rid of some of those lands and stuff. So draw on the cloud post. Gonna put that into play because again, tapped lands, I want to get those in and untapped as soon as possible. Um, each of these is now going to tap for four and I'm going to be able to use that eight mana to get this up um, to its its fifth level on one turn, which is pretty awesome. Um, again, playing the teacher would have been an okay option there. Uh, it's it's not really, I mean, I had the mana available to put it at level 4. Putting the teacher down would give this 6 level counters, and there's not really a need to have more than 5. Once you hit that max number, that max level, there really isn't a, a need to keep adding level counters onto these creatures. Um, you see there he did play a Scred, which is a great addition as well to that deck, um, and that was able to, even though my creature is at a 5-5, five five, it's going to be able to kill it off, um, since he's running only the, the snow-covered lands. So, flashes back Faithless Looting, and get that out of there. We're going to kind of stall out for a little while until he is able to do this, Hand of Emrakul. Um, and this is what I was talking about. There are, you know, we are familiar with the Crusher, which is the most popular of the Eldrazi, but this is the other one. Um, not as powerful because of the Annihilator 1, but it is still a little tough to deal with, and he can actually play it for basically free by sacrificing those spawn tokens. Um, so he's going to get that out, but I did save this Oblivion Ring. And I will be able to use that to get rid of this hand. Um, with the leftover mana, I'm going to be able to put down my Wave Watch. Uh, and this is an opportunity where I could have used the extra mana to um, play the, the Teacher. But I decided instead I have all this free mana available on the Cloud Posts. I'm going to just dump it all into leveling this creature up. 
so we will do so. Uh, you see again, Scred comes down, and even though that was a 6-6, six, six, he's got plenty of mana to be able to kill that off. So, we're going to hopefully pass this game along, if it moves. Let's hit play again. Alright. So, again, things kind of stall out in this game because of the fact that he's he's got not a, a lot of um, draw options available to him. I've got no hand currently. Um, attempts to play a Predator here, which is another decent-sized creature that generates his tokens, um, and I'm going to be able to condescend it out. Damn, this is really laggy. Um, sorry you, you missed those cards there, but not really important. I did obviously put the Knight of Cliffhaven on top. Um, whatever the other card was, it did go on bottom. So the Knight is going to come down, and again, going to dump Cloud Post mana into leveling it up in one turn to that 4-4 four, four flying. Um, body that it is available at its max level. And of course the one card that my opponent still had left in his hand is going to be Scred, which is going to just draw this game out that much more. Um, another Predator comes down, not a big concern here, I will be able to use Into the Royal to bounce it. Um, you could use it to bounce the tokens, but he has the ability to sacrifice those in response, which would um, make Into the Royal, uh, it would cancel it out. So. Um, you know, you would not get the card draw, which I did pay for there, um, and it, it has to target a creature, so even though he's going to be able to get more spawn tokens, they don't really do anything. I'm not really concerned about them. Um, a lot of these level up creatures do get, you know, abilities like flying or first strike, so even if he has a whole bunch of those spawn tokens, I can get around it pretty easily. Um, so we draw a card, it turns out to be a Knight of Cliffhaven, and again, we're going to be able to level it up pretty fast off these cloud posts. Um, he could still top deck off Screds. He's got a lot of Eldrazi available. You see he gets rid of his four spawns to get that hand down, um, and then does have the, the mana left to play the Predator. So, drawn to Mysteries of the Deep, and this is a situation where I'm going to have to... I don't have to, but I, I played it without the land drop. Um, I really just wanted to avoid this, so I wanted to see if I could find an answer as soon as possible, and I do manage to top deck into Journey to Nowhere off that. So I am going to remove that from the game, and then I can start attacking through with my flyer. I'm going to put my other level up guy into play and start dumping that mana. And this is kind of the, the ideal workings of this deck as far as getting these cloud posts into play and being able to dump mana and level up these creatures within one turn. I mean, this is this is definitely your ideal um, ideal playthrough. You know, it's it's really fantastic to to have these guys be at max level on the following turn. Um, it's, I, I don't know, it's it makes this, these guys fun. A lot of times, level up, I, I felt it was a mechanic that was just kind of thrown out there just to throw it out there, but this is definitely, if you're going to try and make it work, Cloud Post is a nice way to do that. So, attacking through, this is, um, you know, it's got Island Walk, not important, but it is 6-6. Six, six. He does have options to chump block a lot of it, but he is going to keep taking the 4 damage off the flyer. Um, decides to chump block there with his Predator. I'm not sure why he did that. Uh, he could sit here and block for four more turns off the spawn. Um, I'm guessing he was saving those to be able to play his uh, hands for free, but it's not... At this point in time, he's got the nine mana available to him, and tapping out to play a hand is not a bad thing. I mean, I would easily do that over sacrificing four spawn tokens and taking sick damage, you know, stuff like that, but... Skywatcher comes down as I try and level it up. He does cast Spawning Breath and is able to kill one off. Um, I'm okay with that because I'm still going to, again, be able to attack through with this flyer. Um, he even decides not to block. He could have easily chump blocked both of these guys, um, but he would have had one turn and would have to top deck a uh, Scred and use it to kill off the Knight of Cliffhaven um, to, to find some kind of way around this. So... Moving to game number three, hopefully before I lose my voice. Um, three lands here, opening hand, pretty good. we got both colors and an evolving wild. Uh, again, in a situation where you have an option to play Escort on turn one, or you can use the evolving wilds, um, I decided to get that going as soon as possible, and I figured, worst case, I could put down the Outrider um, on turn two. So, opponent puts down Soul's Attendant, and I immediately think uh, it's either, you know, mono-white aggro, or you're facing... Um, the, the green-white token deck, which is definitely going to be trouble. Um, so, 
I, a bit of a misplay here. Uh, I, maybe not a misplay. I, I chose to use the Evolving Wilds to get an island. Um, in retrospect, you know, hindsight being 2020 and having the second escort, had I used it to fetch a planes, I would have been able to put both escorts into play on this turn um, instead. But, you know, I had a planes, I had an island in hand. Usually the, the rule of thumb is the fact that the blue is the heavier color in the deck. You want to get that second blue first. Um, but in retrospect, again, being 2020, I would have been able to put out both escorts. Um, I decided to instead, you know, I'll tap out both mana, I'll put out the Outrider. Um, it's it's a nice little guy, but that, that level up of four makes it really not good, even in a deck like this. So another soul attendant, or another soul warden comes down. It's, it's those sisters, absolute trouble. Um, he's going to gain two life every time I cast a creature, which is not fun at all. Uh, luckily, you know, my Outrider is that two toughness, so he has to chump block with both guys to kill it, and it will at least, you know, give me the opportunity to kill one of these. Um, any opportunity against this kind of deck to kill a creature, you want to focus on these life gain guys. Um, but we're going to put down the two blue and use that to level up the escort. Um, again, you could have put out the cloud post here. I, I decided to wait until next turn where I could, you know, put out cloud post and still be able to. Um, do escort plus level counters. Um, I, I wanted to get that second escort into play before putting out this teacher so I could get kind of the most out of its ability. So down comes Squadron Hawks, which is uh, a little troublesome, but once I get these guys leveled up and they have that flying ability, um, clearly, you know, it sucks that the two uh, level up creatures that I have available to me currently are not flyers, but we do have a lot of options as far as flying creatures to block those. Um, so I'm not too worried. And you see here, we, we do top deck into a Knight of Clip Haven as well. So not too worried about the flyers. Going to get the escort into play first. Um, and this is kind of kind of an interesting thing. I, I'm hoping at this point in time that I get a land on the next turn. Um, and that will give me the ability to play both the knight as well as the teacher and get the most out of it. Um, like I said, I, I kept running into this thing where I wanted to, to get a creature on the board that was in my hand before playing the teacher, but then on the turn where I was going to play the teacher, I would draw another level up creature and go, oh, well, let me get this one on the board, and then I'll play this guy. So this could end you in a situation where you just never play the teacher when you really probably should have um, to get them leveled up sooner. So it's it's something to keep in mind that you want to, you know, while it's it's definitely best to get these guys in first, um, getting the teachers down is almost more important at some point in time. Um, maybe maybe around this point where you have three available to you, um, a couple already leveled up so that they're close to, to hitting the maximum, um, especially with these outriders because that four is such a heavy cost, so being able to use these teachers in order to get those into play is definitely a stronger move in my opinion. Um, kind of an odd move on my part here. Uh, I think this was a misplay. I was, um, if you look at the teacher, it says, uh, when it enters the battlefield, put two level counters on each creature you control with level up. Um, so this was a misplay on my part because I, you know, like I said earlier, with proliferate, there has to be a counter to get a counter. With the teachers, that's not the case. Um, so I could have played the teacher, and, and this really is gonna gonna cost me big here because I could have played this teacher instead of wasting four mana to add that one counter there. Um, it it makes him a nice blocker, but it's not really it's not really as beneficial as I mean if I had put the teacher down, he would have still gotten to that first level um, and and changed. So it was definitely a misplay on my part. So opponent now plays Righteous Charge. All creatures um, he controls get two two until end of turn definitely gonna gonna hit me hard here um, and another kind of interesting thing he left this soul's attendant available and I, I thought at first it was a misclick like I, I said you, the first thing you're gonna shoot for is blocking these soul wardens um, giving yourself an opportunity to uh, kill those um, at this point in time it I mean it doesn't really matter because he's only got two attack and it will not be able to kill the warden um, but you know still you want to always shoot for that um, and this is why he left that one open. It was the uh, Ramusian Rally. If you control a planes, you may tap an untapped creature you control rather than playing mana cost, and you um, creatures you control get 1-1. One, one. So his deck was kind of white weenie, but it was definitely emphasized on these older um, pump spells that worked across the board instead of you know being something like Stompy where it is uh, targeted to a specific creature. So now the, the shuffler is definitely telling me, stop being stupid and play a damn teacher, and I am still not listening. Um, 
so I, I attack before playing a teacher. Oddly enough, it's just it was it's a bad bad game, what can I say? Um I do put the teacher down. I realize at this point in time it's not going to level any of these up beyond you know, to that last level, but I don't know. Still it's it's frustrating to me that this probably this should have been the second teacher that I played. I should have played one on the previous turn. And then when playing this guy on this turn, um, would have leveled those guys up to their final level. Um, it just, you know, when he's got that, uh, this many 1-1 one, one creatures, and this, these types of spells that allow him to pump all of them across the board and, you know, to a certain size, uh, it definitely puts me at a bad spot. I mean, I'm at 7 life, um, and not a lot of options here. So he doesn't attack through, and I get a little too aggressive, I think, here. Um, I do play another teacher, which is great. Not hitting a fifth land definitely sucked, because that took away other options, like playing the Knight of Cliffhaven. Um, you see here, I don't have an option for a journey to nowhere, and I really, at this point in time, realized that the teachers were my best bet to get these guys up to their max size. Um, and now, this is where I think I get a little too aggressive. I continue to attack with all three of my level creatures, um, and that taps me out when I know my opponent is playing with these board sweeps. Well, not, I'm sorry, not board sweeps, these board-wide pumps. Um, I really probably should have just kept attacking with the Outrider, maybe one of the Escorts, and left the other one back um, to, to chump block. Uh, he's going to be able to get three through the air, and I'm at seven life. Um, if he's able to, to give him that simple 1-1, one, one, then I'm going to take six, which is going to keep me alive, um, because I, I would have had enough blockers for the ground, but I didn't leave myself enough blockers for the ground, and... Uh, He's clearly, when he attacks all out like this, you know it's game over. You know he's got the, the cards to do it. Um, and it's, yeah, there it goes. He gets them all 1-1, one, one, and it is enough to kill me off because I did decide to attack with both of these escorts as well. So, definitely sucked. Um, but this was still ended up being a good example game to show how the deck can do without the cloud posts. Um, the bottom line is without the cloud posts, definitely need the teachers to make it work. Uh, really needed the fifth land and really needed to to understand the cards better and, and not make the, the big misplays. Um, getting these teachers out faster would have leveled these guys faster and probably just at least shifted the way the game ended up going. Um, so there you go. Those are the, the replays on the, the example games. Definitely check out the first deck tech video if you have not. Um, and I'm going to throw up in a few minutes, um, the review and, and kind of my final thoughts on this deck as well.